Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order 43 of 2022, calling the Shura and Representatives Councils to convene for the opening the first session of the sixth legislative term on Monday. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Chairman of the World Customs Organization Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa and members of the WCO Policy Commission at Dhabiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the vital roles played by customs authorities in supporting global economies and promoting economic development. His Royal Highness commended the efforts of Bahraini workforce and Bahrain's customs who always work in the best interests of the country and citizens and adopt international best practices that cement the Kingdom's position at the international level. Level. His Royal Highness welcomed the members of the committee in the occasion of their visit to Bahrain, noting the outcomes of the committee meeting, which was held for the first time in the kingdom. His Royal Highness commended the efforts of the WCO headed by Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad, wishing it further success. The WCO chairman and the members of the WCO policy committee expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's support in promoting customs work and wish the kingdom further progress and prosperity. The advisor to His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. On behalf of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa opened the first Arab International Cyber Security Conference and Exhibition. Patronized by His Royal Highness, the event is held at the Exhibition World Bahrain with the participation of high profile speakers and in the presence of cyber security experts from various countries. His Highness Sheikh Nasser stressed that cyber security has become a basic pillar of the ICT sector in the world. To to confront cyber risks, noting that Bahrain attaches special importance to cyber security given its major role in providing cyber protection for all sectors that support the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. His Highness noted that the Kingdom is one of the leading countries in the region in the field of cyber security, citing its keenness to develop the ICT infrastructure and adopt many initiatives and projects to improve the readiness and security of information. His Highness has asserted that the Kingdom's hosting of the conference reflects its interest in developing the telecommunications, ICT and digital economy fields, being one of the promising priority sectors, as well as its keenness to provide a platform to identify the latest policies, legislation and technologies related to cybersecurity. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, affirmed that holding the first edition of the Arab International Cyber Security Conference and Exhibition is in line with the directives of His Majesty the King to shift to digital systems and delivering services within an integrated digital transformation plan that is carried out according to disciplined cyber standards. The Minister asserted that His Royal Highness's patronage of the global cyber security gathering reflects His Royal Highness's interest in ensuring that it contributes to enhancing cyber security, which has become an essential pillar of the comprehensive security system. General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah appreciated His Highness Sheikh Nasser's initiative to hold the first edition of the conference, which gathers cyber security officials and experts in the kingdom, particularly following Bahrain's advanced security achievements and success in reducing crime rates, while continuing to provide digital services with a professional approach and establish a safe infrastructure in the ICT field. The minister stated that over the past years, the kingdom has strived to support and secure the digital transformation process by launching the necessary 
initiatives and setting the basic rules of cybersecurity in order to put in place a robust and sustainable electronic environment capable of confronting the increasing cyber challenges. He stressed that achieving cybersecurity is not the responsibility of the government agencies alone, but also that of the private sector, which remains a basic partner in this regard, adding that users also have, must have su sufficient awareness to ensure that their use of the global network of information is safe and beneficial. He also highlighted the importance of the partnership among the relevant sectors in setting up a unified framework to confront cybersecurity threats and provide the required protection. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي أصحاب السعادة الضيوف الأعزاء أسعد الله صباحكم جميعا بكل خير يسعدني أن أرحب بكم في افتتاح المؤتمر والمعرض الأول للأمن السيبراني في بلدكم الثاني مملكة البحرين وهو المؤتمر والمعرض الأول من نوعه الذي تستضيفه مملكة البحرين وتضم خبراء في مجال الأمن السيبراني وأمن المعلومات محلياً وأقليمياً ودولياً لمناقشة أحد أبرز التحديات التي تواجه دول العالم كافة في الوقت الراهن ولعلكم تشاركونني الرأي أنه إذا كان العالم قد تحول إلى قرية صغيرة بفضل التطورات التكنولوجية الهائلة والمتسارعة فأنني أقول أنها صغيرة فعلاً ولكن الأمن أكبر أولوياتها في ظل سعي بعض الدول والجماعات لتوظيف التكنولوجيا على نحو سيء من خلال استهداف المنشآت الحيوية وناقلات وموانئ النفط على نحو غير مسبوق مما جعل الدول كافة المتقدم منها والنامي تعيد النظر في استراتيجيتها الأمنية والدفاعية سواء من خلال تأسيس هيئات معنية بمواجهة تهديدات الأمن السيبراني أو تبني استراتيجيات منفصلة لهذا الغرض الحضور الكريم مع أن التهديدات السيبرانية تمثل تحديا لكل دول العالم إلا أنها أكثر حدة بالنسبة لدول الخليج العربي في ظل تطورها السريع نحو تطبيق مفهوم الحكومة الإلكترونية ضمن تسارع خطط التنمية المستدامة بالإضافة إلى حالة توتر إقليمي يتم توظيف التكنولوجيا فيها لتهديد أمن الخليج العربي بوجه عام والأمن البحري على نحو خاص مما يمثل تحدياً غير مسبوق 
بالنظر للأهمية الاستراتيجية للموانئ والممرات البحرية التي تعتمد عليها دول الخليج العربي بشكل أساسي في تجارتها مع العالم الخارجي إن الحديث عن التهديدات السيبرانية يندرج ضمن استراتيجيات تعزيز الأمن الوطني للدول بجميع أبعاده فالتكنولوجيا هي الوسيلة الأساسية لتنفيذ خطط التنمية بما يتطلبه ذلك من ضرورة تأسيس بنية تحتية متطورة ومرنة لتتلاءم مع التطور المذهل للتكنولوجيا ومن ناحية ثانية فإن وجود مؤسسات معنية بالأمن السيبراني يبقى ضرورة استراتيجية لكل دولة الأمر الذي أولته مملكة البحرين أهمية بالغة سواء من خلال تأسيس المركز الوطني للأمن السيبراني بموجب مرسوم ملكي صادر من سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة عاهل البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه فضلا عن إصدار الاستراتيجية الوطنية للأمن السيبراني التي تنهض على خمسة أسس وهي الحماية والحوكمة والوعي والشراكات وإعداد الكوادر الوطنية علاوة على الجهد المجتمعي الذي يتكامل مع نظيرها الرسمي من خلال التوعية وتشتيع الابتكار وخاصة في مجال الذكاء الاصطناعي والمبادرات الوطنية لمواجهة تلك التهديدات والقضاء عليها في مهدها ضيوفنا الكرام يكتسب مؤتمرنا هذا أهمية بالقة لكونه يمثل منصة حوارية تضم المعنيين في مجال الأمن السيبراني وأصحاب الشركات مع صانعي القرار لمناقشة كيفية التوفيق بين الاستفادة القصوى من التكنولوجيا وتجنب مخاطرها حيث تمثل مثل هذه اللقاءات فرصة سانحة لبلورة رؤى متكاملة حول تلك القضية فضلاً عما ينتجه المؤتمر والمعرض في من فرص لقطاعات كافة ومن بينها المرأة والشباب لعرض الإنجازات والمبادرات ذات الصلة بتحدي الأمن السيبراني لتتكامل الرؤى والجهود بهدف بلورة خطة شاملة لمواجهة تلك التحديات إن جدول أعمال المؤتمر والمعرض يثري بموضوعاته على مدى الأيام الثلاثة من حيث تنوعه للمشاركين والقضايا المطروحة التي تتناول طبيعة تلك التهديدات وما آلت إليه من تطور وما تمثله من تحد بل أن التعرف على طبيعة الهجمات السيبرانية في الماضي وما أسفرت عنه من نتائج وكيفية مواجهتها يحمل في طياته دروسا مستفادة ونحن نتطلع نحو المستقبل بخطى ثابتة وتصميما على الإفادة من تلك التكنولوجيا باعتبارها أحد ركائز القوة في المجالات المتعددة إن مناقشة بناء القدرات الوطنية والبنى التحتية اللازمة لعمل تلك التكنولوجيا تحظى بنصيب وافر من أجندة عمل القمة والمؤتمر وهي قضية محورية بالإضافة إلى الأبعاد القانونية لجرائم الأمن السيبراني التي لا تزال تمثل معضلة ليس فقط على المستوى الوطني لكل دول بل على المستوى الدولي في تكييفها القانوني من حيث تحديد المسؤولية عنها وما يتطلبه ذلك من فرصة عقوبات على مرتكب تلك الجرائم حضور الكريم لقد أكدت الأزمات التي شهدها العالم وأبرزها تحدي جائحة كورونا إنه لا مفر من التعاون لمواجهة التهديدات المشتركة من خلال تبادل الخبرات في التعامل مع الهجمات السيبرانية وضرورة تأسيس شراكات دولية في هذا المجال بالنظر إلى الارتباط الوثيق بين مستويات الأمن الوطني والإقليمي والعالمي على نحو غير مسبوق وحتمية حماية المرافق الحيوية الخاصة الموانئ البحرية بوصفها شرايين الاقتصادات الوطنية للعديد من الدول الأمر الذي وجد صداه لدى دول 
حرصت على اتخاذ إجراءات احترازية في هذا المجال بما يعني أن مجال إدارة الأزمات السيبرانية قد أضحى في مقدمة استراتيجيات الأمنية للدول عموماً وفي مجال إدارة الأزمات على النحو الخاص أن المؤتمر بما يتضمنه من جلسات ومناقشات وورش عمل تتجاوز توصيف التهديدات وتستهدف البحث عن حلول مبتكرة وتبني مبادرات بناء ونشر الوعي وتعزيز القدرات وتوصيف التحديات وتصنيف مخاطرها وكيفيات مواجهتها برؤية يسهم الجميع في صياقتها ويعمل الجميع على تنفيذها في ظل عالم أضحت التكنولوجيا محركاً لتفاعلاته وسمة لقوة دوله أنني إذ أرحب بكم مرة أخرى أتطلع لإسهاماتكم التي سوف تمثل مصدر إثراء لأعمال هذا المؤتمر والمعرض آملاً أن نحقق مع النتائج مثمرة تسهم في الاستفادة من التكنولوجيا بفوائدها والحد من تهديداتها والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The first Arab International Cyber Security Conference and Exhibition opened under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which was attended by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The three-day event is held at the Exhibition World Bahrain in Asghir under the slogan Empowering Global Cyber Security Cooperation, providing a platform to exchange expertise and supporting cooperation. This is a very important event uh, for us. We've got quite a number of British companies here. Uh, we've got the UK Cyber Ambassador from the Department of International Trade uh, here because um, the topics that are touched by cyber, it's not just security, it's the whole range of different things that are very important to government, to uh, business and to individuals. And it's great to see all the collaborations starting to come together in the physical space here at uh, Exhibition World. The event highlights global initiatives and the latest trends in the field of cybersecurity, in addition to discussing main cybersecurity challenges and developments while providing perfect solutions and studying best practices. With the uh, directions of the government to uh, go for fully transformation in the government, it's very important to secure uh, government services and systems. Uh, such an event, uh, bringing all the experts in the Arab region internationally, uh, is uh, very important to exchange information, exchange experiences, learn from other uh, uh, countries, issues that they are, they are facing, and try to uh, be always ahead of the game. Uh, so uh, securing our, our, our systems is a key uh, element of our success. This, is, this event is very, very important. Uh, first of all, we are happy as Benefit Company to participate in this important event. And uh, I believe uh, this event uh, uh, having a lot of experts from different uh, world uh, related to the cyber security, something that I think it's hitting our lives on a daily basis and becoming more and more. So it is important for the organizations and even for the individuals and for the country. So that's why I believe this is the right time now to have this kind of um, uh, events. And we are looking forward in the future to have the similar uh, events because uh, we believe that uh, this kind of events you know, will add value to the community as a whole. The event serves as a global platform for all experts and specialists in the field of cybersecurity, for all the representatives of government and private sectors, and all participating companies. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. Under the patronage of the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the second edition of the Khalid bin Hamad Chess Championship for Bahrain Schools 2022-2023 concluded yesterday. The Ministry of Education in cooperation with GSA, the Bahrain Federation of Mind Sports, the Bahrain Chess Club, organized the championship in which more than 400 students qualified. His Highness expressed pleasure with the wide participation in which students competed 
reflected in one of the most important mind sports, which is gaining wide popularity in the world. His Highness added that the championship is held based on plans to develop schools activities and implementation of the directors of His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness stressed the importance of sports that enhance students' mental abilities, especially since chess is considered one of the games that rely on intelligence. His Highness also lauded the cooperation between GSA and the Ministry of Education in organizing this tournament. The Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed Mbarak Jum'a, addressed the ceremony, expressing deepest thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for patronizing the championship. He praised His Highness's support to youth and sports in light of the development march led by His Majesty the King with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He also hailed the role of His Highness Sheikh Nasser in supporting Bahraini youth and developing sports to honor Bahrain in regional and international events. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, visited the Chinese embassy in Bahrain to offer condolences on the demise of the former Chinese President Jiang Zemin. The minister offered to the Chinese ambassador to Bahrain, Anwar Habiballah, the sincere condolences of the king, government, and people of Bahrain to the government and people of China on the demise of the former Chinese president, recalling his efforts, sincere efforts to achieve development, progress, and prosperity for China, and the important and prominent role he played in strengthening the historical and close friendship between Bahrain and China. The Minister of Labor, Jamil Hamidan, headed Bahrain's delegation to the 17th Asia and the Pacific Regional Meeting of the International Labor Organization held in Singapore. The conference focuses on the most important political, economic and social issues in the field of work related to the countries of Asia and the Pacific in particular. The conference highlights ILO's programs in addition to projects and programs related to the increase of job and the best successful experiences to confront the economic and social effects of COVID-19 on the economy and the recovery from them. The meetings also shed light on financial and investment policies in the labor markets as well as the possibilities of investing in digital infrastructure. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Daina, participated in the opening session for the 8th Mediterranean Dialogues Forum, opened by the Italian President, Sergio Mattarella. The minister affirmed Bahrain's keenness under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Bahrain is keen to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, while taking part in a panel session themed towards a broader 
paradigm for energy security. The Minister of Oil stressed that Bahrain is continuing to devise and implement ambitious development plans and initiatives in order to achieve its environmental and climactic obligations, including the reduction of emissions by 30% by 2035 and the increase of the area of mangrove trees four times compared to the current area and doubling the size of green spaces using renewable energy and reaching net zero by 2060. The minister highlighted the importance of serious dialogue among various countries to discuss issues related to the security and stability of the global economy in order to ensure continuous provision of energy to all countries and competitive prices and to support investment in urban development in addition to supporting scientific research and the use of modern technologies to shift their renewable energy and reach net zero neutrality. The Minister of Oil and Environment, Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Barak bin Daina, participated in OPEC and OPEC Plus meeting, which was held virtually with the participation of the energy and oil ministers from member states. The online meeting discussed an approved oil production policy and the possibility to control production, as well as other key issues pertaining to this vital sector. The minister pointed out the importance of these meetings to discuss controlling the current levels of oil production in order to support the market stability amidst the challenges and geopolitical and economic difficulties the world is going through. He underscored support to continue cooperation between pr producers and consumers to brave challenges and work out appropriate solutions to maintain stability and sustainability of the oil market and serve the global economy. Dr. Bendaina stated that there was an agreement at the meeting to keep the oil production policy unchanged and adjust the frequency of meetings into two months instead of one month in order to back the stability of the market. He noted that the OPEC plus group agreed at the meeting last month to reduce oil production by two million barrels per day starting from November 2022 until the end of 2023. The Minister of Social Development, Assam al Asfur, and the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, headed the delegations of the two ministries to participate in the sixth international conference on disability and rehabilitation. The conference was organized by the King Salman Center for Disability Research at Al Faisal University in Riyadh under the patronage of the custodian of the Tuhali Mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. The conference aimed at reviewing the results of scientific research to serve this important group and their families in various fields, in addition to discussing scientific issues and contemporary trends in the field of empowering persons with disabilities as well as exchanging international experiences that contribute to facilitating the transition of the disability category from childhood to youth. Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat, held a ceremony for the launch of a new book titled An Insight into Bahraini-British Relations. During the reign of Sheikh Hamad bin Isa bin Ali al-Khalifa, the ruler of Bahrain 1932-1942, to which was written by the executive director of the center, Dr. Hamad Ibrahim al-Abdullah. The chairman of the board of trustees of Dirasat, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed al-Khalifa, affirmed that the Bahraini-British relations have been based on solid foundations of friendship and mutual respect, and that the UK is an important and strategic ally of Bahrain. Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed added that the late Sheikh Hamad bin Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa was keen on utilizing the Bahraini British friendship to benefit from the British institutional expertise. He noted that Durasad's keenness to draw inspiration from the noble royal visions to document Bahrain's march and that of its leaders to enrich the national memory and to provide an opportunity for future generations to read the national approach of Bahrain's people. The president of Djibouti, Ismail Omar Gela, received Arab Parliament Speaker Adel Asumi. The president praised the development march in Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King, which strengthened the kingdom's status in various fields and made it a leading model. He hailed His Majesty's efforts in supporting and strengthening Arab solidarity and protecting Arab national security. The president affirmed that Bahrain adopts a balanced foreign policy in light of the prosperous era, which strengthened its active presence in its Arab regional and international environment.